uh, on this cold day, we say that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, Father. We just thank you for that right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we welcome every precious person, every family. We welcome you in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Your will be done. We just thank you, Lord. We invite your precious Holy Spirit to have full control over the service. We thank you, Father God, for signs and wonders. We thank you, Father God, for healings. We thank you, Father God, for word of knowledge and wisdom. Father, word of prophecy. Father God, we thank you for the gift of healing. Gift of the discerning of the spirits in this place this morning, Father God, in Jesus' mighty name. We say, Father God, that your Holy Spirit should have his way with each and every single one of us. Put fire in our hearts this morning. Let your burning fire burn our hearts and burn all the dross out of our hearts, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, your provision, Father. We thank you, Lord God, that the pastor will speak, uh, preach the oracles of God. We just thank you for that right now, Father. The blind eyes will open, the lame will walk, the deaf will hear. Father, we'll see before our very eyes miracles, signs and wonders. Father, you're a good God, you're a mighty God. We just thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just thank you, Lord. You will fill up the church with the... the uh, Lost, Father God, the sick, the dying, Father God, that you will fill up the church, Father God, bringing the people, Father God, so that we can minister to them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, Lord. Psalm 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. He's praised in the assembly of the saints. Hallelujah. Let Israel rejoice in their Maker. Let the people of Zion be glad in their King. Let them praise the name of the Lord with dancing and make music to Him with a tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in His people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Let the nations rejoice in, his, uh, in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. May the praise of God be in the mouth of their mouths and a double-edged sword in their hands to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind the kings with, their, uh, with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron to carry out the sentence written against them. This is, this is the glory of all his saints. Praise the Lord. Father, we put the flesh under this morning and we come into the house with praise, honor, and glory to your holy name, Father God. We thank you for that right now in Jesus' mighty name. Family, let's stand up and praise Amen. God with all our hearts in yes, Jesus', in Jesus mighty name. name. Hallelujah. Happy praise. Hallelujah.
hallelujah, we praise his name, hallelujah, yes Lord, I worship you. then you're not in proper relationship with him and you need to get in good relationship with him. But God is love and he loves you. He loves you too much to leave you where you are now. 
He is always looking for us to grow and to prosper and to, to mature into his man or woman that he's called you Amen. to be in this life. And don't ever think that your life is insignificant because it's not. That's right. It's not. Your life means so much to God. And God wants to use you to touch somebody else right. so that they can have the same experiences that you're having in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So God is love. And Christianity is all about love. It's all about personal relationship with Jesus. Being born again is entering into a personal relationship with Jesus based on love. And let me tell you in the beginning and probably all the way through, He loves you more than you love Him. He knows you better than you know yourself. But I want to tell you this morning, especially the married people. But all good commun relationships depend on good communication. All good relationships depend on good communication. If there's no relationship, there's no communication. And communication is two-way. But let me first say to you that the one thing they taught us at Bible college... And the one thing we bring out when we do marriage counselling, pre-marriage counselling, if somebody comes and asks us to marry them, they, we take them through a period of, of counselling. And the one thing that we do say is this, that you have to be able to communicate. The thing that the devil uses to destroy marriages and to break down ministries is sex, money, and then communication. You have to be able to communicate. I have to be able to communicate with the, the sheep that God has planted in this church for them to receive what God wants them to receive. Lee and myself, we have to communicate with each other because else we will not know each other. And our marriage will be worthless and use, useless. And we will never have communication. Communication is always two-way. There's good communication and then there's bad communication. And it's surprising how many married people are walking with bad communication instead of good communication. Uh, often, Leah will say something and I'll say, I was just thinking about that. That's because we're always in communication. We're one, we're one with each other. Yeah. And, uh, and that, that happens many, many times. Nearly every day, I would say. Yeah. But there is good communication and there's bad communication. But communication consists of this. It consists of hearing what is being said and speaking to be heard. Not speaking, not yelling to be heard, but speaking so that the person you're talking to can hear what you're actually saying. That's what I'm trying to tell you this morning. So there's two uh, sides to communication. One is the hearing and the other is the saying or the speaking. And we need to listen because God is speaking. You see, we expect Him to hear us when we come to Him in prayer. We expect Him to hear us. But we should be just expectant to hear from God. We should be just as expectant to hear from God. My wife, she has a book, and you've heard me tell some of you this before. She has a book, and she has it open when she has her quiet time. And when God speaks to her, she writes down what God speaks to her. She can show you she's got volumes of books going back ever since she was born again nearly. And uh, she's got written down there every single day what God has been saying. But now God also wants us to even expand on that and for us to be in constant fellowship with Him and listening to Him and talking to Him and speaking to Him. But a lot of people think that they have difficulty in hearing 
God. And I want to try and see if we can help you in that realm through this series on how to hear God. If he doesn't hear us, let's first go through all these basics before we can get into the meat and the nitty gritty of what we're saying. If he doesn't hear us, it's because we're not close enough to him and maybe we've even separated ourselves from him. In Isaiah chapter 59 verses 1 and 2, it says there, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he cannot save, nor his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. He hears. But your iniquities have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear you. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue have muttered perversity. Now this is God speaking through the prophet Isaiah in the first covenant. We're living in the days of the second covenant and we have good news when it comes to this scripture. But the principle here is this, that your iniquity, your lies, your perverse lips, your sin can separate you from God. He can turn his face from you and he cannot hear you. That's right. And that's why he sent us Jesus. And you know, we've just read that scripture about our sin and our iniquity mm -hmm. and God's face is hidden from us and he cannot hear us. That's why we need Jesus. Amen. Because we can only, we can come boldly into the presence of God once we're washed in the blood of Jesus. But nevertheless, having said all that, the Apostle Paul throughout the New, New Covenants, through Corinthians and, and his epistles, he keeps telling us to put off the old man with his sinful ways and put on the new man that's free of corruption and all these things. You see, we have to, as the Bible says, work out our salvation with fear and trembling. So we do really need to also do our part. We need to brush up. But I think we worry so much about brushing up on being a good person, and there's nothing wrong with that, but we don't do much about brushing up on our relationship with God and our relationship with one another. In Jesus' name. Maybe it's just me. Maybe you're working at it and you're doing well at it. I don't know. But if we don't hear him, it's because, let me just summarize, we have either separated ourselves from him or we do not give him enough time to listen to him. We need to sit still, we need to sit quiet, and we need to listen to what he has got to say to us. We also don't recognize his voice. I'd like you to turn in your Bibles to 1 Samuel in the Old Covenant, in the First Covenant. 1 Samuel, and Samuel comes just before the books of Kings, if that will help you. 1 Samuel chapter 3. Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1. Now the boy Samuel ministered to the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no widespread revelation. And it came to pass at that time while Eli was lying down in his place and when his eyes had begun to grow so dim that he could not see, and before the lamp of God went out in the tabernacle of the Lord where the ark of God was, and while Samuel was lying down, that the Lord called Samuel. And Samuel answered, Here I am. So he ran to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli said, I did not call. Lie down again. And Samuel went back and laid down again. Verse 6. Then the Lord called yet again, Samuel. So Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. And Eli answered and said, 
I did not call. My son, go and lie down again. Verse 7, now Samuel did not, this is important, now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, nor was the word of the Lord yet revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. So he arose and he went to Eli and he said, Here I am, for you did call me. Then Eli perceived that it must have been the Lord that called the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and it shall be, if he calls you, that you must say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel answered, Speak, for your servant hears. You see, that's how it is with many of us. God is calling us. Bob, Bob, Leonora, Leonora, Demi, Demi. And we go running to one another. Did you call me? <laughs> Meanwhile, God has just called us in Jesus' name. I can think back on my years. We were born again in 1981, hey? 1981, February, February 1981 February. was our rebirth. And uh, we entered into relationship with the Lord Jesus. And over the years, I can remember many times when God has spoken to me. But I can tell you there are many times when I'm pretty sure he has spoken to me and I didn't recognize his voice. Here with Samuel in verse 7, I told you it was very important because it tells us that at this time Samuel did not know the Lord, but obviously the Lord knew him. Mm -hmm. He was serving in the tabernacle in the t and, and, and he, he was with Eli. He was sitting under the, the tutorship of Eli. And the Lord knew him and wanted to speak to him. And God wants to speak with us all the time. You know, we can save ourselves a lot of trouble and a lot of distress if we first listen to the voice of God right. instead of concentrating on our minds, talking sometimes sense, sometimes reason. And I can tell you sometimes when you hear God's voice, and you're not sure if it is God's voice, God will be telling you something that seems unreasonable, that doesn't make sense yeah. in Jesus' name. For instance, if you're struggling, if you're broke, and you're struggling financially, what does it tell us in Luke? I think it's in Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Let's go there quickly. It's not on the screen in fact, but don't worry about it. And it tells us there, Jesus is speaking, and he says, Give, and it will be given That's to right. you. That's Good right. measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. And the Apostle Paul, he tells us in Corinthians, that God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. You see, so when God's answer to Lord lack is to give. That's right. Absolutely. God's answer to bad relationships is to forgive. Even yes. when you're not to blame. That's right. Walk in forgiveness all the time. Walk in forgiveness all the time. Often God speaks to us and we're like Samuel who at first didn't recognize God's voice. Or maybe we're like the Sadducees of the New Testament and we never hear God's voice, but instead we're always looking for a sign. Yes. And in Matthew chapter 16, it tells us there, verses 1 to 4, it tells us there, Then the Pharisees and Sadducees came, and testing him, testing Jesus that is, asked that Jesus would show them a sign from heaven. And Jesus answered and said to them, When it is evening, you say it will be fair weather, for the sky is red. And in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and threatening. But listen to what Jesus says to them. Hypocrites! 
You know how to discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the signs of the times. You see, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, they were always looking for a sign, that had no relationship with God, listening to God's voice, and they had the Son of God present with them, who was going about, doing good, healing all who were sick, and, and setting the captives free, and all the rest of it, and yet they didn't recognize Him. You see, sometimes we hear from God, but we still carry on in our own way instead. That's true. That's true. Is it right? We know what God is saying, but we still insist on doing things our way. You know, we have a little small, small word in our vocabulary in the English language, and uh, it's called but. It's such a small word, but it can cause so much problems. But, somebody will come for marriage counselling, for instance, and what I do when I'm doing marriage counselling, I try and get the couple back focused on the Word of God. What is the Word of God saying about their marriage, about their relationship? And often there's a lot of pride that is crept in to the husband or into the wife. And when you tell them what the Word says, they will say, But! Somebody will come and they will say, Pastor, I'm struggling so much financially this month and I just don't know how to get out of it. And I'll tell them, sow a seed. Sow a seed. Give and it shall be given back to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running. Bad, Pastor, bad! I need that because that's my last penny. I can tell you now it's best to listen to God's voice right. and to be obedient to God. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way, in the New King James Version, it says, its end is the way of death. Another translation will tell you, its end is the way of destruction. There is a way that seems right to a man, there is a way that seems right to a man. Listen, it's got to line up with the Word of God and you need to be hearing God's voice. You need to be hearing God's voice. We're going to, over the weeks, we're going to speak to you about how do you listen to God's voice? How do you recognize God's voice? But if you're born again, if you're born again and you're in relationship with God, Born again people always want to be in church. Born again people always want to be reading their Bible. Born again people always want to be having a time of prayer or talking to God. Born again people, you come to my house to visit us. Then apart from sports, because we do like our sport as well. But other than that, and even sometimes we will forsake the sport to have on preachers on the TV listening to them all day long, all through the night, we'll have preachers on, John Hagee, different people like that, listen to them, and listen to what they got to say, or we'll have on praise and worship videos, play, playing the whole day. Now you might say, but pastor, you going overboard, or pastor, but you're a pastor, I'm not, I don't need to hear all that stuff all the time, I come to church, I pay my tithes, why do I need to hear all that all the time? You need to hear it all the time so you can get to know God. Then, when you get to know God, you get to recognize His voice. Right. He tells us, draw near to me, and I will draw close to you, in Jesus' name. But, having said all that, turn, to me, turn with me to John chapter 10. John chapter 10. Here, Jesus is speaking about the sheep pen, the sheepfold, and the sheep, that's us, entering into the sheep pen. In Jesus' name. At verse 3, Jesus says, of John chapter 10, mm -hmm. verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, to him, the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
God has called you by name and he's led you out from the kingdom of darkness and he's placed you into the kingdom of his glorious light, the Bible tells us. So the Bible tells us that we should hear his voice. Jesus said the sheep hear his voice. The sheep hear his voice. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them. And the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. That's so important. Jesus is saying the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. You know my voice. You hear every Sunday my voice. And he says here, Jesus says, they know his voice. If you're a born again believer, you should know the voice right. of your God, right. your heavenly shepherd. You should know his right. voice. And verse 5 it says, yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will follow, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of God strangers yeah. they do not know the voice of strangers they know the voice of you should, must should be like me you must know the voice of your God and sometimes I miss it sometimes I miss it but we spend time over the years yeah. learning yeah. the voice of God learning to recognize the voice of God and I'm going to tell you in time to come over the next week or two how you will recognize the voice of God. It is so important. You're in John chapter 10. Let's just go down to verse 27. And Jesus says, My sheep. Now are you sheep of Jesus? Or are you sheep of the God of this world? The prince of this world. My sheep, Jesus said, hear my voice. And I know them. And they follow me. You see, you know the voice of Jesus and you will follow Jesus. You will hear Jesus. Sometimes by his spirit deep within you, you can be, have you ever been in the presence of somebody having a disagreement with them and you said something and you just think to yourself, I should never have said that. Mm -hmm. I should never have said yeah. that. Yeah. And you know, once those words have gone into your mouth, you can't catch them. Right. You can't round them up and put them back. Mm -hmm. They're out. They're released. Mm -hmm. And your words are seed. Okay. Jesus said your words are seed. Jesus said this word is seed. We have to be so, so very careful. And like Leah's prompted me here, that you need to cancel those words, those word. bad yeah. words, because every other word yeah. you will be judged on. So you need to cancel those words yeah. with a good word. Thank you, Jesus. With a good word. Yeah. Some people think that they hear God, but they are listening to their own voice. Some people think that they hear God, but they are listening to their own voice. And this is probably one of the most difficult uh, ones to deal with. Yeah. Some people think they hear God, but they are listening to their own voice. You go walking past the showroom and you see the nice new car, the, the latest car, and it's so expensive and you really haven't got the money for it. And your own voice is telling you, go in and have a test drive. Be a man, a woman of faith. God will supply all your needs. Go in and have a try. See what you, and then when you get to the sixth or the seventh payment, you're thinking to yourself, what could I have done with that money? Yeah, in Jesus' name. <laughs> in Jesus' name. So we need to learn the difference. We need to learn to recognize God's voice so that we know that we're not listening to our own voice. But you will never learn to hear God's voice unless you test what you're hearing. You have to test what you're hearing. But you have to, let me tell you, you have to test what you're hearing with all humility. That's right. If you have too much pride, you're going to think to yourself, I don't want them to think I'm stupid. I don't want them to think, I think I'm silly. We must never think that we have arrived. Never, ever. 
We must never think that we have arrived. There's times I can be preparing a message, or there's times that we can be at home and I can be discussing something, and my grandkids, Demi and Trenton, are there. And I might say something, and one of them might say, but Grampy, the Bible says this. Now I can be full of pride and think, who are these little uh, 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 whippersnappers to tell me that I'm wrong, and all the rest of it. But I've learned you've got to be humble. Yeah, you've got to be humble. Yeah, You're not going to grow right. unless yeah. you are humble. Mm. So some people, they think, they hear God, but they're actually listening to their own voice. And we read just now, you can put up the last scripture, we read just now in John chapter 10, Jesus said that the sheep know his voice. The sheep know his voice and God speaks truth based on love and not on boastful pride or self-justification. Be careful. God will speak only that which is truth and only that that can be confirmed by his word and only that which is encouraging to you. I will listen to prophets often, but their words should be delivered in an encouraging manner. In Jesus' name, the Bible speaks to us clearly about that. So today, I've just been laying a foundation for you on what we're going to be looking at over the next few weeks when it comes to recognizing the voice of God. Next week, we're going to look at, does God still speak today? There are some people, even in the so-called Christian church, that will say God doesn't still speak today. So we're going to look at, does God speak still today? Then we're going to look at God speaking in different ways. And then we're going to look at, He expects us to listen when He speaks. But what I want you to go away from here today and understanding is, first of all, when God speaks, it's love and it's truth. Even if he's rebuking you, he will rebuke you because he loves you and he will speak to you based on love and based on truth. For you to hear the voice of God, you need to make sure that Jesus, and I'm going to end with this, you need to make sure that Jesus is the center of your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hey, can you just throw in some piano music here? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, I just pray for my brothers and sisters, Lord. Lord, they've come out here to church today in this cold weather, but they've come to church, Lord, whether it's hot, whether it's cold. They've come because they love you, Lord, and because they love to be in your presence. And Father God, how I know how much you love them, how you much you want the best for them. And Lord, I just pray Yes, Lord, I'll do that. In the name of Jesus, I bind you, Satan, and you will not steal the seed of the word that's been sown into their hearts today. In Jesus' name. So, Father God, as my brothers and sisters go from this place today, and they go out into the world there. They're going out as your ambassadors. Father God, I pray when you speak to them, You'll help them by the power of your Holy Spirit to hear your voice in Jesus. 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 Mighty name. Put that some music on there. Come in. in Jesus. Mighty name. Just put it up a bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Like every head bowed, every eye closed at this moment. Every head bowed and every eye closed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I need to see this morning, if you're a person that has difficulty hearing God's voice, but with all your heart, 
Do you want to be able to hear God's voice? I just want you, I'm not going to call you out, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'll explain to you afterwards, but I want you to raise your hand so I can see you. In Jesus' name. If you're not hearing the voice of God, and you know you need to hear His voice, and you want to hear His voice, just show me by putting your hand up. I see, see your hand there. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody else? And I see your hand there at the back. In Jesus' name. Is there anybody else? Hallelujah. 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 I just want to encourage those of you who've got your hands up that over the next few weeks you'll learn and you will be able to recognize his voice. But I can tell you he's had me teaching this message to you because he wants to speak into your life and he wants you to be able to recognize his voice in Jesus. Jesus mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 There's somebody here this morning that's going to make a big decision over the next few weeks. A big decision. God is saying to you this morning stay in fellowship with me follow my leading and my guiding and hear my voice in making that decision in Jesus name and then there's somebody here today there's somebody here today and you've made decisions in the past it's got you into trouble and it's because you didn't hear the voice of God, but you know the voice of God was telling you otherwise. But you stepped out thinking you were right and that's where the mistake was. And what God is saying to you this morning is you need to repent. And to repent is not just to cry because you made a mistake, but to repent is to have a change of mind. And to walk in another direction. In the ways of God. In Jesus mighty name. In Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is showing me that there's somebody here this morning and you've got discomfort. At first, I thought it was in your neck, but it could be in your shoulder. But it's around this area. And God wants to heal you in Jesus' name. And that's the truth. He wants to heal you. He says, I am the God that heals you. I am the God that removes all your infirmities. I am the God that removes all your sicknesses and your diseases. Yes, by his stripes, by the stripes that fell on the back of Jesus, you have been healed, says the Lord. And the Lord is saying that when we partake of communion today, and we take this bread, and we eat this bread, we're consuming the body of Christ. It's an act of faith of us consuming the work of the cross by the stripes that fell on his back you have been healed and so we consume that healing and believe you me it's truth and it works in Jesus mighty name so let's eat together this morning hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then the cup. The cup, this cup represents Jesus. The juice represents his blood, which he shed for you. Which he shed so that you could be free. Which he shed so that you could be washed whiter than snow and all your sin removed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So let's drink together. And Father God, we thank you that our sin is removed. And we apply this blood to our minds. In Jesus' name. Let's drink together. Hallelujah. 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 Well, I'm also uh, one of the guilty ones that I've missed God's voice many, many times. He's spoken to me on many occasions. Sometimes I thought it was God and I've waited and sometimes nothing has come to pass. And I know God, we, we always learn by experience and by experiencing God by having fellowship and a relationship with God you'll get to know his voice like I say I'm guilty I've missed God's voice many 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 times and I repent from that and I just want to hear the word of God more and more daily and do what he wants me to do in yes, Jesus name in Jesus Amen. Name. in Jesus name it's just one thing you carry on Father God, we bring every precious person. We bring Trenton before you. We bring Joseph before you, Father. We thank you, Lord, that that knee is healed. And if there's anybody with, uh, that's just come out of hospital that is ill, we pray for your healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray that the bones knit together, the sinews knit together. We pray that the blind eyes open, the lame walk. We pray that the deaf hear. We pray that the cancers are cursed and dry up Amen. in Jesus' name. It will never attach itself to you ever, Amen. ever again in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. We thank you, Amen. Father. Those with confusion will be confused no more that they have That's the right. mind of Christ that no That's weapon right. formed against them will prosper in Jesus', in Jesus name. mighty name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Father, we pray for healing, restoration, Divine alignment, divine yes. intervention, supernatural Amen. wealth transfer, supernatural death cancellation. Father, we stand by faith, trusting and believing that my God shall supply all our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. We thank you for that right now, Lord, for all these precious people in this book, Lord. They cry out to you daily. Father, deliver them, restore them, renew their minds, renew their bodies, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for their provision, for their prayers being answered, Father, in yes. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. For peace, for restoration, Amen. for comfort, Father, those that have lost loved ones, Father, yes. comfort them this very hour, in this Jesus very day, name. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I'd like you just to, we're going to do something a little bit different this morning. It's going to take you to have a little bit of courage, a little bit of spiritual backbone. But I want you to get out of your seat and to go to another person and I want you to start praying over that person. If that person's got a need, they can share it with you and you can pray for them. But I, I, I really believe God has spoken and said that we need to do this this morning. So I want you just to get out of your seats. I don't want you to go home from church not having done this, not having, not having done what God wants us to do. So I want you to get out of your seats just go to somebody else, preferably somebody you don't know. Just take them by the hands and just start praying with them in Jesus' name. You can ask that person if they've got something that they need prayer for. And most of us have got something we need prayer for. So you can just stand in agreement and pray with them. We need to learn to be bold. We need to learn to practice our Christianity, to practice our Christian walk in Jesus that we need to be ready to pray together in Jesus mighty name amen amen so don't be shy let's get out of our seats let's go around and greet one another some of you guys you're looking at me like I'm crazy but okay, don't in Jesus name hallelujah hallelujah
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Karabashi shukupunda. Ramashamba ba 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 bundo. Ika bashi shukupundo. Ramashi shapa ba 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 da. Amba ba 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 da. Iko bundo lo bundi. Ramashamba ba 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 ba. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. We praise your holy name, Lord. We thank you that you are a God, a prayer answering God. That you're a God that always brings things to pass in, in Jesus' name. The Word of God says in the Epistle of John that, uh, let me just get it. What is it, John? You know what scripture you like? John 5, John 5, John 5, verse 14. The confidence that we have in Him in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, we know that He hears us, and if we know that He hears us, we know we have what we ask of God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Where did you say this? 1 John? 1 John 5, verse 14. Oh, yes. Now, this is the confidence, as you just said, that we have in Him, that if we ask anything, According to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So we know that God hears us. When we ask him according to his will, God hears us. Now what I want you to do this afternoon is to make yourself, just for a brief few minutes, separate yourself. And just go in and say, God, your servant hears you. And listen to what God has to say. And you, you'll hear God speak to you, and he'll speak to you truth. Truth. And in accordance with his word. But we're going to look more at that in the weeks to come. In Jesus' mighty name. So until the next time, the Lord bless you. I will pray with that. Yes, Father, we just thank you. It's good measure. Press down, shaken together, running over, shall men fall back into their bosoms yes, and our amen. bosoms one hundredfold, one thousandfold in Jesus', Jesus mighty name. Amen. 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 Lord amen. Bless you. The Lord bless and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Give you peace in Jesus' mighty name. Expect this week is going to be a profitable week in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Until the next time, God bless you.